Hello, friendly listener. You are now tuned in to the Rambling Rogue Show. I'm your host, as always, Rambling Rogue, a.k.a. Jires Rogue, Jires in the Jungle, whatever you want to call me. Um, as always, I'd like to just start this off by just, you know, issuing a nice little round of applause for you, listener. Um, we are on, like, episode 23 or so, so appreciate you for coming in and listening, tuning in. It's June 11th. 2018 it is a very hot june already i'm out here in um california so yeah we're experiencing a real summer you know what i'm saying soon it'll be triple digit uh you know what i'm saying days so oh gosh i can't even i don't even know how i'm even gonna prepare for that honestly like i'm pretty much inside for the most part now, like now that I'm out of school, you know, cause I'm 19 listener, but you know, it's like, I'm pretty much inside all day, but it's, it's, it's still pretty bad, man. Like, oh man, I just, uh, fuck. I melt when it gets hot, man. Like I sweat so much listener. Seriously. I don't know what's up with my glands, but like if I drink like a proper amount of water, man, any amount of heat will just get me like a sponge. I'm just gush, just gushing out of my head, neck, neck. My neck is just raging waters straight up. If you ask anybody that has ever played any like physical sport with me, like basketball or anything like that, if I've taken my shirt off, which, you know, I mean, it's not many people because any times I've ever played sports, you know, I wasn't really the best. But, you know, the few times that that has ever happened, you know, oh, yeah, just raging waters all the way down my back. Like there's just. I don't know how people don't sweat. You know, you'll you'll see some people and they'll and they'll go through the exact same maybe they're just not hustling as hard as me. You know, maybe yeah, I think they're just not hustling as hard as me. Yeah. That sounds likely. Anyway, yeah, you know, June 11th episode, what is this? 23, if I'm not mistaken. Rambling Rogue show. Um we've got a few things to ramble about here. It's been it's a, it's been a uh, less than decent week. I'm not going to lie, listener. It's been a week that usually would get your host very down in the dumps. But, um, you know, the worst that's happening right now is that I'm just inside of this weird creative slump. You know, for the past few days, past like two, three days, I've just been feeling very just negatively charged, if that makes sense. So it's like, I'm not quite in the worst mood. I'm not angry. I'm not, you know, depressed. I'm not anything like that, but just negatively charged as in, I can't get any productive outside of work things going. You know what I'm saying? Like I'll come home from work and I'll just see the games there and I'll be like, nah, I can't do that. But I'll see my art there and I'll be like, shit, I want to do that, but I want to drum something up, but I'll just get to working on a song. And then I'll find like an hour just passes by right there, you know, of me just sitting there, just kind of just not really working on anything, kind of just looking at what I want to work on. And it's just I've gotten to this point for the past few days where I've just been in this stall and I can't really quite. I don't know. It's just this feeling that I just can't shake. And it's uh, it's kind of weird. It's kind of uncanny. But it's like it's it's one of those things where you got to understand your energy is not always going to be positive. You're not always just going to be this, oh, machine that could just output, output, output. And no matter how much you look at other people's successes, no matter how much you look at, you know, like how much somebody else over there may be doing something or how much or how efficiently this guy over there is doing something, you got to just take it on a situational base and you got to take yourself right and your own situation and consider that and say what is right for me and for me you know it's um it's to not push myself over this i'm sure that you know by by the end of the week you know i i'll be up and running putting out not even putting out more content but just trying to create more and just thinking about things like that you know i've been doing a lot of thinking about my future as well with it being june month six you know it's marking about six months since I actually decided to drop out of school. And um, 
dropping out of school and taking a break, you know, because that is what I do intend on making this time. It's it's just a break. But dropping out of school for me was just like kind of a way for me to just signify within myself and to things around me that, hey, we're getting serious about our passions and we're getting serious about, you know, putting ourselves out there and, and trying to make it, as they say. And uh, dropping out of school has been an interesting ride this past six months. I've noticed that, you know, anything is possible. But that honestly, if I'm just being completely honest with myself, I've noticed that without college, my mind is just less stimulated. I've noticed that I'm just less satisfied in in things of the normal average day. Like, you know, I'll, I'll go out to my job, for example, right? And I'll be talking to people because I work at FedEx. I'll be talking to people all day about different things and you know none of them not to say those people right none of the things we talk about though are are quite of any substance right but that's work so then you take it and you say well that's work work is not supposed to be some parlor for great thoughts it's not supposed to be some place for you know any kind of you know great discussion and then i take that 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 feeling and i go okay well maybe my friends right so then i talk to my friends and i hang out with my friends and i'm noticing that now a lot of the times that I hang out with my friends, it's the, kind of the same thing. It's, you know, it's, we're hanging out and, and, and we're talking, but you know, it's, and, and nothing against my friends again, but it's, it's, it's just, it's not quite the conversations. It's not quite the just mind pushing envelope, I guess, exiting, just, you know, just frontier thinking, I guess it's not that kind of thinking at all. And then it's, um, not to, not to, again, not to badmouth anyone, not to say anything bad about anybody, but I do miss that. I do miss somebody coming at me with, even if it's something that I'm not necessarily totally interested in, I do miss and appreciate, or I, 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 I now realize that I appreciate, I appreciated that, that, that somebody would just come to me, like a professor would just come to me with like, just a new idea or just a new concept to think about something that I had already considered, you know, like college for that is pretty great. And then the conversations that would ensue because of that, because the college that I did experience was only through online classes. And then through that, I had actually, you know, like the discussions and things like that, that you can have. And, um, at the time I saw it as very tedious I saw it as very just, you know, just time consuming. I was very much focused on other things. But now that I reflect back on this, I'm just thinking about not quite the content that I was learning, but I guess the opportunity for just greatness in, in, in that kind of open forum discussion type, you know, just based conversation where we're actually bringing up things that have been on our minds and that have, you know, that we've been dwelling on. And even though a lot of times you'll have a prompt in college to go by, right? A lot of times you'll find some very compelling, some very profound, some very deep, you know, just conversation that just comes off inside of a little discussion forum. And, and again, I saw it as tedious at the time, but now I'm just missing it. Like, where is any of that in, in the people that I speak to on a day to day? And, uh, and, and it's, it's not there. Um, I miss that. And I grow to miss that. So, again, taking a break with college this past six months, it's been a it's been an interesting experience. One where I've now learned my limitations more. I've now learned my restrictions as far as like this world and what I think I can and can't do. And I'm now just growing and understanding and. I'm growing a, I guess, decision in what I can and can't do for myself. So basically what I'm saying is, is the world is basically through this past six months, basically shown me that, Hey, there are people here that have had the same passion as you, the same ambition and just didn't fail. There are people that had the same passion and same ambition and did. And then there are people that 
are just still going through it. Okay, they're just still trudging through, trying to claw their way through and trying to find it, just like you are. And it's it's been it's been an experience where it's now made me think about myself in in a in a very different way. And it's made me think of time as something that honestly I mean I think I already thought this, but I think it's just it's doubled down on this. Time is such a good, not even a good, time Time is a, I, I mean, okay, let's put it this way. I'm wealthy because I have so much time and I recognize that and I'm beginning to see that every day that it's the people that recognize this that actually don't get stressed out about, you know, the different little, you know, time barriers that get put on them by different things during their day by day these people have realized that their passion these people have realized that time does not quite hurt your passion in fact actually it really only helps it if you if you stay consistent so it's like i'm just realizing that time is something that i'm wealthy in that i'm wealthy with but that i'm losing it and that while I'm wealthy now, the time, my time is going to be used to furthering everything that I'm passionate about. Because it's like, it's really all, it's the only missing thing, I think, from any venture that's failed. It's time. It's time to think something through, time to, to plan something out better, time to set something up so that it didn't fail, time to just learn more, time for whatever. But... I've recognized that I'm wealthy in that this past six months, but I've also recognized my need to put time down into something very valuable. You know, I don't want four years to pass by and I've been on my passion. And even though I've come a long way and possibly an experience, forget the monetary gain, but I don't want four years to pass and I don't have any physical things to actually say are are my my accomplishments you know i've realized that in 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 this six months that college is tedious and as annoying as it may be to me at least it would give me something solid out of that four years you know what i'm saying that like i could look at um and i know that's kind of like it may seem a little defeatist, but damn it, man. It's a surefire way into getting not recognition, but at least a an acknowledgement of your of your work. It's a surefire way to get that. And I've just been noticing day by day that, you know, if I'm not putting my 100,000 percent into this passion thing like by it's like it's a life or death thing because i've begun to notice that as well it's not a life or death thing for me you know i've noticed that with other people that have passion where it's much more of a if i do this i will go one way if i don't i will go another way i feel like for them it's much more serious and that's when you see a lot more elevated and even quicker you know just um i guess rises but for me it's more like transitioning my hobbies into you know monetization points so if that's the case you know it's it, why am i rushing to try to you know make my passion my everything if that's the case i can actually take a step back take a little longer in transitioning my hobbies and when i'm ready for that to be my everything i can actually jump in because again it's not a life or death situation for me it's not a if i do this it's one thing if i don't it's not it's a if i drop this right now nothing in my actual immediate life changes like you know if if i keep going with it nothing in my immediate life changes but there you go it's the down the line thing it's the it's the it's the future in a few years that I'll hopefully be able to see. That's what I'm hoping for, at least. I'm on a bit of a ramble here. 
It's what we do in the Rambling Rogue Show. It is... It's Ramble Time. And when it is, you know what I'm saying, we, we tend to go on. So sorry about that, listener. But you are now in tune to the Rambling Rogue Show. So that's what you're in tune for. So sorry for that long tangent there. But that's just the stream of thoughts that I've been having about, uh, I guess, time and different things like that. But no, I've realized I've realized these things and um, things take time. OK, so so all I wanted to say on that, really. Yeah, yeah, that's all I really wanted to say on that. What else do we got? <clears throat> so I just woke up my brother er, trying to get a second job. Yeah, man. I am trying to get a uh, second job and I'm and I'm finding that that is actually a much more difficult thing to do. That is a very difficult thing to do when you have a uh, when you have a marijuana addiction. <laughs> so basically I'm finding that trying to get a decent job paying slightly over minimum wage is a little bit harder while smoking weed, you know. Um a lot of these places out here demand even in California that you take a drug test so as I'm navigating through that um, we are still looking for opportunities because like I said though you know like this is a time this is a time game this is a game where you're gonna have to put the time in and I recognize that with a couple jobs my time would be much better placed you know what I'm saying if I'm gonna be making some more money more money that could go to this passion of mine and you know so yeah but it is difficult and yes listener if you must if you must know I'm, I'm sure you must be asking to yourself like why doesn't he just stop why isn't he just this or that again I did an addiction an addiction that I have with weed but um not like a crazy one where like you know I can't pay for anything else. It's just an addiction where it's been in my day to day life. And it seems to it seems it won't be out of my day to day life for quite some time um, unless I change my ways drastically. So. With that, it's just been rolling around in my head to actually go sober. And so we've been trying many mornings, you know, to try to actually detox ourselves this morning, we're stoned to shit because we actually, well, not stoned to shit right now, but a few hours ago, we actually did take a dab. But, um, you know, we will be cutting down and unfortunately, we will be buying less weed. It's just, it's just a fact. It's just a, it's just a way of how things are going. It's just, it's just a, uh, an effect of how things are going because it's like, if I need to upgrade all this stuff, I need to be able to, to work. And also like I need more money. Less weed is more money. So there you have that. Now I'm only saying this, you know, I mean, again, I am addicted. So it's like, this could be totally different tomorrow, but we'll see. We'll see listener. Um, what else do we have to talk about? Yeah, no, I mean, it's it's an ongoing thing that with that one. But, yeah. We are trying to get a second job, though. Ooh, games. The game's coming out basically for the near future. Pretty exciting. Okay. Um, Black Ops 4 looks pretty damn badass. Battlefield looks badass. All of Bethesda looks badass. Um... And that's pretty much it. E3 was yesterday and even actually today, I think, too, and tomorrow. And um, they've got a lot of big things coming out through those AAA developers, those, uh, you know, Bungie, the, the, the Bethesda. They got Halo Infinite coming. And Sony is announcing today their E3 shit. So it's like, yeah, now games is gaming is in a great place right now. And I'm definitely going to be picking up Fallout 76. Um, I don't know if I'm going to be doing the ultimate, ultimate version. I'm looking at it. But, um, and I don't know if I've actually, oh shit. No, I didn't even talk about this yet. I'll talk about it right now. But 
I'm only thinking about it and I'm only on the ledge about it because right now I just actually, uh, oof. I just had to slap a huge bill for this damn car, man. Linda, I love her. She's the topic of my mixtape, but she breaks down. And um, if you were listening to the last episode or maybe a couple episodes ago, I'm not sure what episode it was, but of the Rambling Rogue show where I actually had that that uh, new song from Linda, the EP, uh, you know, playing. It was kind of like a somber, more sad sounding song. That song, I'm actually very grateful for it because if you actually did pay attention to any of the lyrics there, if you actually heard the song, you'd notice that, um, you know, I was talking about basically owning and running a car that's a little old, that's a little messed up, but that I love. And I do love my car. So, shit. Big Bill or not, I'm sticking with her because she stuck with me. I mean, not literally, but my car was the only thing that was there when I had to actually take my ass over to so many different places. So, I got to be there for it. And, yeah. So, basically, I'm kind of on the fence because of that big bill that I had to schlep over. I'm on the fence on, on buying that Fallout 76 Ultimate Package, but the new Bethesda, I mean, new freaking Brotherhood of Steel helmet that they got coming with that thing, so damn hard. I mean, like a voice changer, an actual flashlight. I mean, that that is just, I mean, that is just, that is just, it's just hard. It's just hard. Okay, so... I don't know what we're going to be doing with that. Plus the glow in the dark map. But then with the power armor edition, I, I read that it actually comes with like a big ass frame. So I don't know what we're going to do. It's 200 bucks, you know, so we might save up a couple checks, but the $80 version that they've got also is pretty good. So, so we might just get that. I don't know. I mean, I, I really do want it though, but we're definitely pre-ordering fallout 76 game looks like, if I'm just making a prediction, probably one of my favorite games ever. Like, it's probably going to be one of my favorite games ever. Like, that I've ever played. Probably one of the best games that I've ever played. Um, I can definitely tell you now that that game's going to be getting so many hours from me. And that AAA games... I can't definitely tell you this, but it seems like they're going to actually start coming out with a bit of a vengeance. Um... Destiny 2, Fallout 4 even, um, a few other AAA titles, the, the COD series, a few AAA titles have actually been underwhelming gamers, <laughs> excuse me, and I feel like, not even just me, but the community at large just feels like this is the time to actually revamp for AAA because it's like, geez, we're at this new next gen, but there are really no games, and I really am being generous here when i'm saying this too because it's not like i'm bashing any of them but there are really no games out that i can think of that just have this all-in-one experience where you know it's like some of these games of old where they felt like they had an all-in-one experience because of their time you know because of the limitations of the time but there are no games that now just feel like they run perfectly are an all-in-one experience are an experience that we get we log into we put hours into and we feel you know like totally amazing about i feel like in every triple a experience every large company experience out there right now there's just a, a a slight ding a slight you know just 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 jag in the armor and then it's like you've got so many of these games coming out from from places where you don't even expect i mean i guess fortnite is the only exception to this rule but then fortnite is i mean but i mean it's not really a a, a flaw in its gaming but really it's just a flaw in the game itself i think that you can find but yeah triple a games are just inside of this weird place right now where people are just very mistrusting of those developers you know like bungie like you know the cod guys like you know all these different places and it's like now they're turning it around 343 they're coming hard um i don't know what the hell bungie's doing with destiny to be honest uh they are actually revamping it back up to a game that looks decent 
but it's true what these critics are saying if you've seen any of what the critics are saying it's it's kind of true man it's like we are really just getting the same exact experience from D1 ported over. And, um, again, I don't know about that, but 343 coming with that Halo Infinite, they definitely are going to come hard because they're coming with a new engine that's going to be possibly reimagining the way Halo looks. They're going to be going hard because they ditched numbers. They didn't even go Halo 6 from Halo 5. They went Halo Infinite. So the last time we got a Halo game that was just named, besides Halo Wars, the, the point-click shit, you know, was uh, Halo Reach, right? Halo DC 4, yeah. Halo Reach. And that game was awesome, okay? And that was a game where they introduced it, and it was a game that takes the game into a new direction, takes the game into a different place, and please mistake me if I'm wrong, but I'm pretty sure even revamped by using a new engine to imagine halo for the time like going from three to that game because halo 3 does not look anything like halo reach at all it doesn't even like the no not, the graphics are not even the same at all but uh yeah so i'm pretty damn excited to see this what they've got coming out in the in the future i don't think it's going to be coming out until about 19 2020 but, uh, yeah, 343 looks like they're going to be coming hard with that Halo game because Halo 5 was a little bit of a blunder, the microtransaction nonsense. Halo Infinite seems like a big opportunity for something like that. Infinite, when I strike that in my head, seems like customization. Customization seems like, you know, cosmetics. Cosmetics mean loot boxes, means microtransactions. But hopefully um, these AAA developers are you know heeding what's been going on outside and in their communities and are finally changing the tide and are finally seeing that their corporate nonsense is just just not gonna work against a bunch of people that more or less can be you know a little ignorant when they when it regards their money but people nonetheless you know people that that are actually intelligent enough to know when they're getting gypped so it's like yeah triple a games are there music um the kanye cuddy album honestly i've listened to it a few times only a few times there's nothing on this thing again and i think this and maybe push a t's album is the only exception to the rule that album seems like it's very very well cooked like it's like you know like even if even if the beats are very experimental and things like that it seems like when push comes on to that it's like these are very well thought out not just well thought out but just fleshed out these are ideas we had for songs these are things that we were going to do these um it doesn't sound like a production that was made quickly it doesn't sound like like a production where we can still hear the beat for another song within the song uh yeah, this new Kanye Cuddy album, I think it needed more Cuddy. I think it needed more songs like Reborn. Less songs like that Ghost Town Part 2, where it's, I know Kanye's name is there. But I remember a time when Kanye's name was on a record that he did with as a compilation album. And I'm talking about Watch the Throne here. And you didn't have like three or four other different people just intersecting in every second. You know, I really felt like the guest vocals on this album were a bit too much. I felt like they just took away from the, the I guess, the grand experience that was supposed to be what we were all hyping up was Kanye Cuddy. I enjoyed the record. I really did like the album. I like the songs. I don't think there's any particularly bad song. That's just like straight up, like just, oh God, I got to just turn that off. But there are a couple, I think just like lulls, like just boring moments inside of it. I'd have to be looking at the track list, but uh, pretty much, yeah, it's a decent album, that Kanye Cuddy album, that Kids See Ghosts. The two highlights there for me though are that Kids See Ghosts, you know, that Kids See Ghosts sometime. And, and, and again, it's like, I really do wish it was more of just a Kanye Cuddy 
thing and not Kanye and Friends plus Cuddy. But a lot of the times it was Kanye and Friends plus Cuddy. And I think that a lot of the time that it also sounded very quickly produced. Um, case in point. The intro song has like a push a T verse, which is a good verse. It's a decent verse. Um, but Kid See Ghost, I don't really know how like that, like just, just feeling wise, thematically and shit. Like, I, I just don't even know how like that, like he's what his subject matter there fits. But, um, and even if it doesn't, you know, particularly fit, that's fine, whatever. But then it's just like, I can hear that this isn't the highest level of production because if you really listen closely, and I may be tripping on this, but I played this song a few times and, I, and, 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 I'm, and I'm sure this is what I'm hearing. If you go back to listen to that Pusha T verse on that first, on that intro track for this album, you can actually clearly hear the beat for another song playing. So what I think happened was, is that Kanye or somebody basically just took the vocals that were laid down on another beat a much more trap beat a much more lively beat because you can hear the hi-hats and shit and and then there, there's just like no hi-hats inside of that beginning part if if you know if i'm remembering it correctly because i don't think i could play here but um yeah y'all go check that out and y'all go tell me what's up because it's like Come on, man. Yeah, yeah, I really just like like what was the verse even here for if it wasn't even intended for this? It doesn't even quite exactly match the vibe. It's a good verse, but it doesn't exact the the vibe, you know, and it's just like I don't know. That that was kind of weird. But the production, as always, I don't even think that's something to even talk about. I really don't at this point. I think that Kanye West's production is just going to be flawless pretty much no matter what. He has I mean, I've heard it said, I think it was Sean C that said it. Yeah, he's carved out his own damn genre. And what that means is, is that whenever he comes out, it sounds new. So he's literally, and he'll borrow from contemporary things, but he's just kind of made it to where he's in his own lane. And so that, you know, pretty much anytime he experiments, because it's always going to sound different from the last time, from the last album, from the last whatever, you know, he's pretty much made it so that it's just a given. That the production is just going to be just top notch. But production here is top notch. Um, a little bit more sample based. Like with that, uh, that what is that? Like the second or third song where you, you just, it's like a Christmas song sample or something like that. And it's like, you know, it's like, whoa. I, I, yeah, that was hard. That was hard. You know, and, and then the little, the, the little, me, 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 you know, like with the sample. That was hard. You know, yeah, Kanye West production was, was crazy on there. And I think the only thing that was a ding with the production for me was just how hard he was going with the weirder noises and the screams. And the. it was like, I, eh, I don't really know why this is, you know, it's like, eh, but OK, I guess, you know, just get it weird. Um, I'm not going to lie. That little screaming portion from like. I believe it's like the first to the second song or the second to the third song where it's like, it's like a laugh that just keeps echoing and then it turns into a beat. At first I was really against that, but um, I actually, upon further listenings, you know, kind of warmed up to it. So maybe it's just, in fact, you know, maybe it's just really that like, I guess like hypnotizing, but maybe not. I don't know because like that shit rubbed me the wrong way when I first heard it. And I usually go off of like, just how I first he like feel usually, but Decent album. Live stream was ass. Live stream was ass. How you guys had people wait not just an hour, but an hour. And then when you start the live stream, y'all niggas had the audacity to just be making a bonfire for 20 minutes. Yeah, that's that's just like, I mean, come on. Like, that was just too much. Jesus Christ, man. Like, <laughs> There's just a point where we just have to kind of say there's just too much creativity here, you know? And I think that was one of those points where somebody should have said too much creativity. It was, it was to me, it was to me kind of like um, another thing that Kanye did. It was like when Yeezy Season 3, right? We had Yeezy Season 3. And that was lit, right? That was lit. That was amazing. But then you have Yeezy Season 4. 
four, I believe it was, or maybe even five. I'm not sure which one it was after that. But it was one where he did it like Kanye did it like outside and the people were out in the sun and he tried to have like the exact same thing where, you know, he's had, having everybody stand around. But nigga, it was fucking hot and like people just just didn't receive it well. It was kind of like that with these releases of Yay to Kids See Ghosts. I think it's like, you know, whatever the content was there was good. You know, I'm sure that the clothes in the Yeezy season four were good, you know, and things like that. But it's like. The fact that you have it just dressed around like all of these different things, you know, with the live stream and the and the Kanye and friends, just so many fucking features on there, man. It's just like, I don't know. It's just not as good as like, yay, where it's like everything kind of just went off perfectly. You had the live stream where, you know, I guess it's, 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 a, it's a much more beautiful event. It looks it looks prettier. It looks better. There's a lot more stars, you know, Wyoming. It's like a, it's like a, you know, it's like a thing. This one, it was like, okay, we're doing this album, Santa Clarita, let's schlep it. And then let's just like, not that they just ragtagged it together, but yeah, kind of like they ragtagged it together and they just had the same exact thing from Wyoming. It's just, they you know, ragtagged it together. I don't know. I guess it's all in real time though. So I guess that's the intention. But yeah, I, I don't know. Anyway, hmm. anything else? I used to align myself with uh, DJ Academics and the chat niggas. And while I stopped doing that quite a while ago, I just find it, I guess, interesting. When I see people still do it, you know, I just find it interesting when I see any set of people follow an example and, and do it with such devotion, you know, I mean, like fans are pretty passionate people. They have no ties to the passion they love usually. So in this case, I mean, most of these fans have no ties to DJ Academics, you know, like actually, except for just buying his merch and, you know, supporting him that way and supporting his music, but they still go hard. And, oh, excuse me. I've been watching this beef that Academics and uh, the YouTuber Dom is Live have been having. And if you haven't known about this, if you haven't seen this, I think this thing is very interesting for a few reasons. I think it's interesting because, and you could correct me if I'm wrong, but I do think that this may be one of the first instances of black YouTuber beef, at least on this scale, right? And um, I think that's a great thing. I think that this is a great thing. It's a great shift. Because it's like Academics said, if, I mean, DJ Academics is one of those that really is, um, he's, he's almost prophetic in a way, I think. Because, uh, you know, he's put himself inside of this forefront of rap and inside of this forefront of the internet's, you know, rap industry so much that I think he's kind of grown akin to the different things that happen. And he's kind of just, I guess, seen a change in tide. And a few months ago, he actually made some comments when he was speaking about like Ebro and Hot 97 and when they were actually getting on his head and when other different radio outlets were getting on his head with like the Jesus and Meryl situation. Excuse me. He actually brought up that, uh, hey, we're the new media. Us people that are here on the internet, us people that are putting in these, you know, the work every single day in front of a screen, you know, that y'all make fun of that y'all ridicule this, that. We're the new media. We're the ones who rappers are going to want to start coming to. We're the ones who control the narrative, the outlook of people in today's landscape. And I think that when now we fast forward it to his beef with Dom is Live and the, I guess, optic, the way it looks with that, I think that he's becoming that just more and more so because this beef 
can only serve beef let's say this beef can only serve to do only a couple things to boost up the clout and recognition of dom is live because his activity just generally is just going to go up if people from academics's camp are going to be coming to watch his videos and it can also only just fuel the conversation about academics maybe not more so helping with the clicks because i think he's solid and decent there and in fact he doesn't even bring up dom is live you know through his youtube medium but i think it'll help him where the conversation gets continued about him his role his role in hip-hop how important it is what power he has etc and i think that this beef above all else not above all else but this beef as well just kind of proves that while he is a voice he's not the only voice and these voices actually have solid good fan bases now a lot of them are fickle but a lot, of the, a lot of these people are fans. A lot of these people are very just in tune. And they're in tune to just different things a lot of the time. So they have different preferences. And I think it's just been very interesting to kind of just watch this grow. Because believe it or not, listener, when we watch things like that, we are watching the first, I think. And please let me know if I'm wrong. But we are watching the first traces of what, you know, what other YouTubers outside of hip-hop have been able to do we're catching this kind of love and hip-hop dramatized straight up you know just kind of you know nonsense from this and i think that it'll only grow in the future i think that it'll only increase and it'll only just continue to make more headlines and only bigger headlines you know um what i hope to not see happen is violence but my dream is, and I think it's headed toward this, is you'll soon have it where two nobodies, man, two nobody personalities that have, you know, consistent content that have all these different things could start beefing and they could even incite, you know, clicks and, and attention with themselves, you know? There are so many different avenues for people to get on right now, for people to come up right now. And I just, I just love it. I mean, I don't know. Am I tripping for that? For just liking that there's beef within that space? For me, it just signifies that we're moving towards hip hop, at least, right? The culture, whatever you want to call it, that we're moving just more and more towards that mainstream. You know, the more hip hop seeps into YouTube, the more hip hop becomes more important. It's not just Drake, the most important musical artist now. It'll be who's the most important DJ, yeah, not DJ, but, you know, hip-hop YouTuber. Is it DJ Ghost? Is it DJ Academics? Is it Domus Live? Is it this guy? Is it this guy? Is it that guy? Is it whoever? I like it. I like the competition. I like what it sets up. And, again, if we can just negate the violence, no violence, I, I only, I think I'm going to love the conclusion. I think I love what happens. I love how this story ends. So, yeah. It makes it so that people like me, that my job will be easier, is what I'm also trying to say. These guys beefing, showing people that, yeah, we're just humans and we actually have problems at times, shows people that we can accept more voices because these are just humans that, that just mess up. They have problems at times. They do things. They live. We don't have to just get our news from one source, from two sources. No. We don't have to get our opinions from just a couple of you. You have so many different places now. And now these communities can intermingle and clash too. Again, if we have no violence, I think this only is a positive for hip hop. Seriously. Seriously. If you just keep it about videos being made and nonsense like that. I think the only thing that I could fear though is people trying to to monetize this but and i guess people i mean what other people will call the colonizer trying to monetize this but i think they already do they already do that you know on youtube you'll see these youtubers go back and forth with each other about relationship different th types things like that and it'll be straight up love and hip-hop type content yet 
you know, they're white. They're, 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 you know, Asian. They're, you know, different colors like that. They're mixed. They're all these other different things. But for the culture, you know, specifically for blacks, right? In this internet age, I don't know if we've quite had that dramatic kind of little move. Now, I could be wrong, but I think that's where things like this are kind of telling us we're heading towards. And, um, yeah. Fallout 76, I'm getting it. Silly Songs Volume 2 on the way. It's okay for you to tell someone you don't like them much. Like, that's okay. It's literally fine, okay? You can do that. You have the right to do that. And I'm trying to get a, a job and not get busted with this drug test. Oh, by the way, I forgot to even bring this up while I was talking about that. I literally bought small Listerine packs. I literally bought small packs of Crest, Listerine, fucking all this other shit, you know, like just mouthwash, and I just have it in my car. So if I ever get this job at, at a Home Depot, I'm going to just pop that shit in there, gargle it, keep it on the side of my cheek, and just hope that that shit does not get detected. <laughs> I ain't even gonna lie to you. Homie told me that that, 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 that will work. And here we are. <laughs> but uh, pretty much that's all I've got today. Oh, hey, I've been reading as well. Guys, read. Read, 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 read. Please read. Oh, where's my book? Let me show you guys my book. Hold on. Okay, guys, I've been reading as well, and um, I always want to encourage you guys to read. You don't have to read, you know, anything huge. You don't have to read anything like that, but just as long as you just keep trying to push forward and um, basically just increase your vocabulary and just try to just increase what you know, just broaden your horizons, see new things without seeing, read. Um, I'm reading this book. It's called The Big Payback. It's all about hip-hop, but the businessmen within hip hop and the different ways that they actually change the world. You know, everybody always talks about the artists and different things like that and the ways that they change the world. And a few times you'll hear, you'll hear about the executives, Kevin Lyles, you'll hear about, um, you know, uh, what's homie with a beard, uh, Rick Rubin, who isn't really an executive. He's more like he produces songs, but you know, but, uh, you know, you'll hear about these guys here and there, but, this book really tells the story of those people that kind of put people in a room, produce songs, you know, shipwreck, whatever, um, and how they were able to make money. Yeah. Read, play video games, live good. That's all I got to say. <laughs>